Mercedes has been caught red-handed. When George Russell's Las Vegas Grand Prix onboards made it to social media, people were quick to spot an irregularity that looked all too familiar. And if found guilty, it could cost the Silver Arrows big time. What did the people see? Keep watching to find out. This week's scandal revolves around the controversial dual-axis steering, commonly referred to as the DAS system, first introduced by Mercedes in 2020. Could it be making a surprise return? And if so, is Mercedes secretly wielding it to gain an edge? The chatter picked up steam during the Las Vegas Grand Prix, where Mercedes put on a blistering display of speed. Their performance was electric, with the team seemingly thriving on the cold track conditions. Typically, Mercedes's low ground clearance creates a narrow setup window, causing their tyres to degrade quickly. But on the chilly Las Vegas asphalt, this potential flaw turned into an advantage, allowing them to dominate. An eagle-eyed fan on F1 Twitter going by the handle of Atty F1 Diplomat has been sleuthing hard. One standout observation is a clip showing George Russell's steering wheel subtly moving as he approached Turn 14, suggesting some curious activity. The video, now looped for closer inspection, has reignited speculation about whether the DAS system, or something like it, is back in play. The DAS system, introduced by Mercedes in 2020, was a revolutionary feature that gave the team a significant edge. By adjusting the angle of the front wheels, either pulling them inward or pushing them outward, depending on track conditions, it helped manage tyre temperatures and enhanced cornering force. This ingenious system contributed to the dominance of the W11, one of the fastest and most grippy cars in Formula One history, before it was banned after the 2020 season. Now, fresh speculation about the DAS system has emerged after George Russell's onboards during the Las Vegas Grand Prix raised eyebrows. In a looped clip shared on F1 Twitter, you can see Russell's steering wheel appear to pull outward, causing the front wheels to shift slightly inward as he approached turn 14. Notably, this motion doesn't seem to occur in onboards of Max Verstappen or Lando Norris navigating the same corner, but a deeper analysis suggests this might not be DAS at work. When focusing on the tyres instead of the steering wheel, the behaviour could simply be attributed to front axle load transfer, a natural occurrence during cornering. Additionally, this type of motion, though noticeable, has been observed across multiple teams, suggesting it could be related to suspension dynamics rather than a secret system giving Mercedes an advantage. Should the debate rage on in the next few days, the FIA are sure to get involved. Whatever the case, Mercedes boss Toto Wolff was full of praise for George Russell's masterful drive under the neon lights of Las Vegas, calling it from another planet. Russell converted pole position into a commanding victory, leading a sensational 1-2 finish for the Silver Arrows in a race that showcased the team's revival. The weekend started strong for Mercedes, with Lewis Hamilton dominating the first two practice sessions. Russell then carried the momentum into FP3 before snatching pole in a thrilling qualifying session. The only chink in the armour is that Hamilton's qualifying didn't go as smoothly, as a scrappy Q3 lap relegated him to 10th on the grid. Undeterred, the seven-time champion stormed through the field in the Grand Prix, carving his way into second to secure Mercedes' first 1-2 finish since the 2022 Sao Paulo Grand Prix. Speaking to Sky Sports F1, Wolf couldn't hide his cheery mood as he joked with the media. It feels very nice, if one would understand these cars, because today we really crushed everyone. Dominant. We could have gone easily faster. At times, we were two seconds quicker than everyone else. We do understand our car, but it's just when you design a car and you put it on track, generally you try and have it good at every track. And we seem to be very good in the high speed when it is on the chillier side, with less grip. That is something we can be proud about, but when it is hot, that's when the car is not performing so well. Russell may have started from pole, but his early laps were anything but easy. He had to fend off a determined Charles Leclerc, whose Ferrari boasted superior straight-line speed, making every defensive move a challenge. Russell's resilience under pressure proved crucial in maintaining his lead and ultimately securing the win. Meanwhile, Hamilton delivered a masterclass in overtaking as he surged from 10th on the grid to finish second. His charge included a memorable on-track duel with longtime rival Max Verstappen, reminding everyone why Hamilton remains one of the sport's greatest wheel-to-wheel -wheel racers. But what's interesting is that while Toto praised George Russell's driving skills, he attributed Lewis's result to a fast car. Could this be a slight dig at the seven-time world champion? 
George's driving was just from another planet. He kept it under control and managed it all the time, said Wolf. I think his defending from Leclerc was spectacular, and Lewis came from P10 with a super strong car, finishing just five seconds behind George, chapeau. Toto Wolff recently opened up about Lewis Hamilton's high-profile switch to Ferrari and the impact it had on their relationship. The Mercedes team principal wasn't informed directly by Hamilton about the move. Instead, Wolff learned of the development through paddock rumours, later confirmed by Carlos Sainz Sr., father of Ferrari driver Carlos Sainz. Hamilton, who signed a multi-year deal with the Maranello-based team earlier this year, made the surprising jump despite having a year remaining on his Mercedes contract. The move raised questions about potential tensions between Wolf and the seven-time world champion. But in a recent interview, Wolf dismissed any suggestion of a breakdown in trust over Hamilton's negotiations with Ferrari. Addressing the situation, Wolf emphasised that while the circumstances were unexpected, their professional relationship remains intact. More details from Wolf's reflections on Hamilton's departure can be found in his interview with ESPN where he delves into how he processed the news and the legacy Hamilton leaves at Mercedes. I think when you need to set a standard for yourself, and I think it was such a difficult situation for him, because our team wasn't doing as good as we expected from ourselves, and I think the opportunity came up quickly over the winter. He probably didn't have enough time to say, well, how am I tackling this with Toto or with Mercedes? So it's not something I have a grudge at all. If we could replay it in a better way, which... There is no better way because he was under pressure, you know, in the summer, in the winter. So maybe we would have had conversations. As the 2024 Formula One season nears its finale, Lewis Hamilton is set to close the curtain on a 12-year journey with Mercedes. Following the Las Vegas Grand Prix, the seven-time world champion has just two races left with the Silver Arrows before making his highly anticipated switch to Ferrari. Reflecting on Hamilton's imminent departure, Toto Wolff shared his thoughts after Friday's free practice sessions in Las Vegas. While details of his remarks remain under wraps, Wolff has consistently spoken with admiration for Hamilton's contributions, signalling the end of their partnership will be met with both pride and a sense of loss. Hamilton's Ferrari move will be a defining moment in the sport, as fans eagerly await to see if the legendary driver can bring the prancing horse back to championship glory. There is no overwhelming emotion now that this is ending, but the last race together will be quite a thing because we had this wonderful partnership for such a long time. But having said that, Lewis is not going to disappear. Lewis is going to be on the grid next year with a Ferrari. We are not losing the person, we are just losing the driver, but we embark on a new future. Do you think that the DAS system was used in the Mercedes cars at the Las Vegas Grand Prix? Let's talk about it in the comments section down below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Thanks for watching.